In New York in the early 80s, there was this connection and it was all to do with making people dance. There was a lot of creative stuff going on in New York. Every week something new was happening. There was just this real creative buzz going on and there was the whole possibility that you could actually make a record. We had a problem coming up with one beat that could compete with the beat we had done for Planet Rock, which everyone was sort of doing. I just wanted to do something different. So that's where Looking for the Perfect Beat came from. We started Perfect Beat in John's apartment. My idea was instead of having one beat, let's have beat this, change beat, beat this. Tradition usually dictated that you'd have like a sequencer part and a chord part and a bass part. This was just a free for all. Lots of 16th notes doing whatever they wanted to do. And you worked it out later. When we did Looking for the Perfect Beat, we explored the parameters of the 808. It wasn't like other conventional drum machines where you'd establish a beats per minute and then you'd have to listen to a click track and then play a drum along with the click. You can basically play and change and change your mind and add. It was very, very liberating. It wasn't like work. It was like play. What I'm going to do is program the hi-hat, the cowbell, and the rim shot from Perfect Beat. Here's the cowbell. There's a complete cowbell pattern. Now I'm going to add the rim shot. Looking for the perfect beat. Now the 16th note hi-hat. The pattern of these three instruments appears on every beat that's used in Perfect Beat. Now, when you play them all together, you can just create a wild, frenzied pattern. On Perfect Beat, we built the arrangement when we were mixing it live. The synths and the drums and everything were played all the way through. We actually constructed new patterns by pulling things in and out of the mix selectively. Editing was a very important part of those mixes, because nothing was linear. And that created an element of surprise. After the 808 beats are put onto tape, we can manipulate those beats even further by pulling things in and out of the mix or adding effects to the individual drums. The mixing board becomes an instrument in itself. You're playing it like a piano or a guitar. We wanted to do something different, and we did. The outcome was very serendipitous. Taking all those tracks, putting them down from the beginning of the song to the end, and then deciding when you were going to put them in and out, no one uses those, those techniques. All records are linear. That record wasn't linear. There is no perfect beat. There's lots of great beats. But it was a good title.